Hey, hey, so let's just pretend this is like a live because I don't know how long this is going to go. I might start rambling. Um, you know, we're just going to see. I've gone back and forth about uh, sharing this message, recording this video, writing something. But I've had way too many conversations about this topic not to address it and leave it up on my feed. So um, I have two main goals. I want to share a little bit about Black Nashville, Blavity, and um, Happy Juneteenth. This is the week of Juneteenth as well, so um, I think it's very timely. Um, but but I want to address this conversation uh, that is still happening and, and one that I think I can add some additional perspective to than, than what I've read and seen so far. So if you're new here, what's up? I'm glad that you're here. My name is Brittany Cole. I'm a native of Nashville. Um, five generations. Daddy's from here. Love Nashville. Moved away for about six years. Lived in Chattanooga, Tennessee for a little bit. And then um, I worked for Pfizer before starting Career Drivers. So Pfizer took us to New York. And then in 20, November 1st, November 1st, 2018, we moved back from New York. Felt like we, uh, to Nashville, felt like we moved to a whole new new city. A lot had changed in that six years. Um, but I'm, an, I'm a native here. So I also feel like I have um, perspective that I can add to, to this conversation um, as it relates to the impact on our city. So, um, last thing I'll say about why I'm recording this video, why am I sharing my thoughts on this topic? Um, I firmly believe that if you aren't mindful, you become what you say you don't like. And I've sat in far too many conversations with countless black leaders, particularly emerging leaders around feeling a lack of support from more seasoned black leaders or feeling like, you know, other black leaders who may be farther along or who could really, you know, in maybe one conversation or one connection or one investment shift their business or mission um, have chosen not to do that and have been frustrated by it. Right. And a lot of what I have read, a lot of conversations that I've been a part of over the last couple of days have just brought that back at the front of my mind, like how how much are we perpetuating the very same thing that we say that we don't like when it comes to support? So let's get into it. If you did not know, and I'm not here to give you a review, head on over to Blavity House Party if you want the full recap um, of the weekend, but I can just tell you I had a good time, okay? So this past weekend, uh, Blavity hosted their, Blavity House Party hosted their inaugural music festival right here in Nashville, Tennessee. So if you're, if you're not familiar, Blavity is a house of brands. Hold on to that because I'm going to come back to it in just a second. Blavity is a house of brands and nine months ago, they acquired R&B House Party, like last fall, I think September or something, um, the, the, the announcement went out. So they acquired this, I guess you would describe it as a, as a um, music event experiential company as an additional arm in their business. The CEO of Blavity or of R&B House Party came on to the Blavity team to lead now in Blavity House Party. And this uh, festival, this music festival was their first, right? So nine months after an acquisition, brand new um, event experience program happened in Nashville, Tennessee. I can confidently say as a native of Nashville that, and if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments, okay? I'm not, I don't feel no kind of way about being wrong, but from, from my purview, I can confidently say that I have never experienced in Nashville a black music focused multi-day event that was executed at the level of production, creative direction, and intentional execution as Blavity House Party was this weekend. Now, let, let's just get one of the critis top criticisms out the way up front. Many people were turned off by the event location being Municipal Auditorium. I'm not gonna lie to you. I looked at it twice too and was like, Municipal? Okay, all right, all right. I bought my ticket though, okay, I bought my ticket. Um, actually, I, a, a friend uh, I got my ticket, shout out to Brittany Oliver. Um, but um, I, I, I said that as well. I'm like, okay, that, that that's interesting. But let me tell you, and I believe anybody who stepped foot in the Municipal Auditorium can attest to this, if they're being honest. I have never seen the Municipal Auditorium like that. From the activations on the porch, I didn't even know that little section was up there, to walking into the space and the stage and setup design. They did a phenomenal job with that space. I was highly impressed. And because this is the week of Juneteenth, for your historical, you know, filing, right? Um, the Municipal Auditorium, that, that that exact site, is the same site that the Bijou Theater set, set on. Um, you can look up the Bijou Theater, B-I-J-O-U, 
And that theater was used by Black people prior to desegregation. So that site actually has Black history for Nashville. All right, do with that what you want, but I just thought that was an interesting fact to include in um, this conversation. So um, that happened this weekend. And after day one, uh, night one, on night one, right, the criticisms start rolling out online publicly and I was highly disturbed. So if you follow me and you click through my stories, you've probably heard me say some of what I'm gonna share um, right now. Um, if not, then let's have a conversation, all right? And I, and I encourage you to leave your thoughts in the comments, all right? I, I'm sharing this for the reasons I stated, and I am open to conversation. So feel free. Uh, the comments are open on this post. So a, a few issues with what I saw online, okay? And this, this, and I, and I want to say, you know, I'm sharing this message with everyone, but I am especially talking to Black leaders. Like, I am especially talking to those who have influence in the city, those who are builders in the city, those who are creatives in the city, those who have influence in the city, I'm especially talking to us. Number one, when it comes to the national narrative around Nashville, it is very white centered. From a music perspective, it is very white country music centered. I know this, you know this, you ain't gotta be a native to figure that out. Most people, most most black people, especially that live outside of the state of Tennessee, um, question sometimes whether or not, like, oh, it's. It's a it's a it's a black social scene there. It's a you know black music scene there. So I say that because one of the first, I think, overlooked facts about Blavity House Party being in Nashville is the fact that um, not only was it a beta, but it was a beta that was beneficial for Nashville's brand. So the fact that Nashville was selected to be the city for this inaugural experience had, and I still believe has, the opportunity to be a win for the, the reputation and the narrative of Nashville, Tennessee for black people. So that in and of itself to me speaks to this opportunity being bigger than black Nashville. That's number one. Number two, um, this was a beta. This, this, this house of brands acquired this company nine months ago and this was a first experience so all of the this didn't work right this artist didn't show up i'm not excusing any of that i don't know any of the details and plans around what happened and what didn't and who was contacted and who wasn't but what i can tell you is i do know what it's like to do something for the first time i do know what it's like to produce an event experience and for things to go wrong on the day of despite the best planning i do know what it's like to leverage the resources that I have to do the very best job that I can to ensure that I create a five-star experience. And I believe not only was that the intention of this weekend, but I also believe that that's what we got to experience, right, this weekend, even with the challenges. The other thing that I wanted to, to, to share when it comes to, you know, the fact that Blavity is a house of brands. You know, I've been in a lot of conversations that have referenced, you know, she this and she that, um, talking about the, the CEO of the company. And, and I just... I pause and I've had to remind, you know, my my friends in those conversations, like this is this is one sector of a business. This is one brand in an umbrella company that does many things, that has many different brands. And so I don't necessarily believe that I certainly didn't have the expectation that this CEO is going to personally reach out to anyone. Right. There is a there's a leader and a team that is responsible for this experience. So I, I wanted to share that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to say, you know, is that I think we have to be honest about our ego as leaders. Do I believe that community engagement, particularly when you are coming into a new market to launch something new is important? Absolutely. Do I also believe that as a leader, we are called to, especially if we say that we're about what we say we're about and you don't need me to reiterate. Right. But if we say we are about things that are for us, by us, and in the first opportunity that we have to get online and to completely trash um, something that is for us, by us, I, I think that that points to a deeper issue. I also think a lot of the conversations around who was and wasn't contacted have less to do with supporting the outcome of a successful event and had more to do with ego. Like, can we just be honest for a moment. I felt, I think a lot of people felt um, overlooked in this experience where I asked myself and I also asked those who I engaged in conversation with, who did you reach out to? Did you share with them that you were interested? There was an open call for event partnerships, media partnerships, 
did you fill out that form, right? What did you do to position yourself or raise your hand? This feeling that like, you know, I'm the it person in the city and I, I should have been contacted, I think is an opportunity for us to really check our own ego and to check our own motive. And as leaders to ask ourselves, am I, am I relentless about the mission and the purpose or am I relentless about how I'm positioned in pursuit of the mission and the purpose? And I think sometimes, right, and if this isn't for you, that's fine. If it's for you, know that I'm delivering it in love and also stuff that I check my own stuff on, right? So I'm right in here with you. It's like, you know, Brittany, don't get offended if you did not do your due diligence to ask, but also interrogate the offense. Because if I'm a leader and I'm about Black people, Black Nashville, Black thriving, like all of that. And I didn't point my community to this experience. I didn't reach out and say, hey, how can I support this? I didn't say, hey, y'all go buy a ticket. I didn't say, oh yeah, the artist didn't show up, but make sure we out there for day two because we supporting this. Like if I didn't do those things, then I think that that's a deeper level of self-awareness that we need to interrogate on our own one-on-one. Connected to that, I believe is grace. And I said this in my stories and I'll leave it here. I don't believe that grace is about having some talking point on a video or on a mic or on the stage. This is what grace looks like. Grace looks like experiencing things that are actually going wrong, knowing that you would be accurate in airing the laundry on social media and choosing not to do that. Not only is that grace, but I believe that that's leadership. And then last but not least, um, again, I think that as, as, Black Nashvillians, right, who want more cultural um, and culturally inclusive experiences in our city, we really have to ask ourselves, hey, how can we ensure that when we have these opportunities to partner with, you know, media companies and brands and other businesses that are beyond um our 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 Nashville geography right beyond the, the 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 state and this isn't the first time that something like this has happened I got another media company in my head right now you know it's like and maybe the approach is instead of us saying hey this company didn't do this or why didn't they do that if we're the leaders that we say we want to be right how can we be proactive in partnering to ensure that they are successful because I firmly believe Blavity House Party success in Nashville is connected to my success in Nashville. It's connected to your success in Nashville. So, you know, this feeling that like, or, or some of these sentiments that I've read, like, oh yeah, I knew that wasn't gonna work out because this is and that. I'm like, yo, <laughs> like, what is this really about? So listen, I just wanted to share that. Um, those are my thoughts. Did things, you know, go wrong, not go to plan? Sure. Like, sure, yes, they did, you know, and there are plenty of places that you can read and check out for that. But I just wanted to get on here and share my thoughts because I've been asked so many times and have had so many conversations over the last few days about this. And just want to offer an additional perspective that if we as a city want to see more experiences here, when things come here, we we must support right and and at the very least if we choose not to support with our presence let's not deter others from supporting because we want to leverage a missed opportunity right um or or a challenge on their part to get online and to bad mouth you know what happened so i hope that's helpful for you um you know I don't have any stake in this. I shared that in my stories as well. You know, I want to see you win. I want to win. I want to see Blavity House Party and Blavity Inc. win. Um, and I want to see Black Nashvillians included in the narrative um, and in the experiences and in the decision making around who comes here and um, who gets amplified here. And I believe that um, there's a lot of potential for us to see more of that. But it does also require us to do our part, whatever that might look like for you. So, I hope this was helpful. Let me know your thoughts in the comments.